this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is a video to compare two fantastic and interesting RGB rich and wonderful sounding USB microphones, the HyperX Quadcast S seen on the left and the Endgame Gear XSTRM seen on the right. Now these are two interesting microphones which are actually remarkably similar in a number of different ways. You'll notice for example that they both have pop filters, they both have RGB lighting, they both have a shock mount system and a desk stand, they both have a USB-C connection and more. Also they're both fantastic in terms of capture quality and I'm going to demonstrate that at the end of this video for a comparison but I'm using one of the mics right now so let me know in the comments which one you think it is before you get to the end. I'm going to show you these two microphones side by side show off the various things about them and talk about the hidden features which perhaps make the Endgame Gear microphone stand out from the Quadcast S. You might think initially from looking at it that it is just a copy although it is slightly different looking obviously one's kind of circular and the other one's a bit of a triangle and one's white and one's black and there are some differences there but there are actually some specs differences and some very interesting things buried in the Endgame Gear microphone which make it curious and potentially more exciting. There are however also some frustrations with it and I would still say that the Quadcast S is one I would recommend to many people for many different reasons. Fantastic quality microphone and they're both good for this reason. You're not paying extra for a pop filter or a shock mount. You get those as standard and that's a really nicer thing. The RGB lighting is also not just for show it's also for use. You'll notice, for example, that when you mute it on the Quadcast S, the lighting turns off, so you know it's muted. On the Endgame gear, it changes to red, so you know it's muted. So you have a visible cue as to the reason why the lighting's on and what it's for, which is obviously handy. And as you can see from the shock mount, you can abuse both these microphones quite a bit. Not that you would grab them like this, but it does mean that if you knock your desk or if you knock your mic stand, then those sounds won't go through into the microphone and you'll have a good capture quality still. And that's a really nice feature to have as standard with a microphone and something that you'd normally pay extra with for other microphones. And that's a benefit, so that's fantastic. Also USB-C connection to your PC and a number of other interesting highlights. Now I'm going to go through and talk about some of the features individually because they are ever so slightly different. The Quadcast S, for example, has a 48kHz 16-bit sample rate whereas the Endgame Gear microphone has 24-bit, 192kHz sample rate, so it's a higher capture quality in terms of the sample rate. What you will notice though is that the Quadcast S is a bit more flexible in terms of polar patterns, so you can see on the rear here it has multiple polar patterns. You have stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid and bidirectional. This means that you can use it for various different use cases. So you might use it for podcasting, for example, where you have multiple people talking into the same microphone from different directions. If you're using it just for voiceovers, as I might be, then you'd use it in the cardioid pickup pattern, and you can see that selector at the rear. So this gives you more options in the use cases for this microphone and how you might implement it in your setup. And so you can just turn this dial at the rear and adjust that there. Obviously also picking the right one ensures you're blocking out the right levels of background noise and things like that. You also have a 3.5mm jack at the back for mic monitoring and that is standard plug and play affair so it's really straightforward to use. And then there's a touch sensitive volume wheel on the bottom for adjusting the gain. And this is a very smooth action on this and this is one of the things I liked about it. And it's the little things like this that really make the podcast in my opinion is you can adjust the volume here without making any sound that we picked up by the microphone if you're gentle. Unlike a normal sort of switch or dial, it does a good job of eliminating some of that pesky noise. And this microphone obviously comes as standard with a desk mount and that shock mount setup, but you wouldn't necessarily want to put the microphone right next to your keyboard. You would pick up a lot of noise, but I want to demonstrate that it is possible. And I have done this in the review. So if you want to check out the review linked in the description, watch that and you'll hear a test of both the mic on my desk and on the boom arm. I would, however, recommend with both of these microphones that you get them onto a boom arm for the best quality sound. And that eliminates any problems with picking up desk sounds, whether that's knocking, keyboard, mount, moving your mouse around or whatever else. And you do have the option for doing that. Now that is one thing that I would say actually makes these two mics stand out as well as the, as you can see, the process for removing the quadcast from its desk stand is a little bit fiddly and there are multiple bits that come off of it. You also need this extra attachment that's included in the box. 
And that in itself is a problem potentially, because if you lose that or any of the parts, then you'll have problems going between the desk stand and the mic stand. And I have had multiple people contact me and say, what do I do if I lose this part? And I don't know the answer. Probably just get in touch with HyperX and ask them if they can give you a replacement. Not ideal. So a little bit more fiddly. However, what you'll see is once you do get it on the boom arm, and this is the blue compass boom arm, by the way, it's really easy to position in the right place so that you can easily talk into the direction you need to. So for cardio I'd pick up pattern, you'd obviously talk in the front where the HyperX logo is and talk directly into it. I found it really easy to adjust and get it positioned right because of the way they'd set up the mounting system. Also, the RGB lighting is controllable with HyperX's Ingenuity software. And there are two zones that you can control within that where you can basically set different RGB lighting schemes. So you can change the look and feel of what it looks like out of the box as standard with a couple of tweaks. You will see some hot spots in this video, but that's just because of the angle of the camera. You generally don't see that. And it is a really nice looking microphone in my mind for this reason. But as I said, it isn't just for show, it does double as actually being useful because it will turn off when you press the mic mute button which is the capacitive touch button on the top of the microphone and I will say that I actually found that to be more effective and accurate during use than I did the end game gear so it really just requires a gentle touch and again the benefit here is you're not pressing any buttons that could result in a knocking noise going through to the microphone and resulting in that sort of click sound where you're muting which I think is obnoxious if you're on stream and you want to mute it and you press a button and you hear a donk it's not ideal for your audience however with the HyperX microphone you just gently touch the top and it mutes and I found that really consistent with the end game gear microphone as demonstrated in the review it's not as consistent again check out the links in the video to the full review to find out more about each of these microphones and in-depth looks at things like that. But I just found the mute was a bit fiddly with Endgame Gear and it definitely wasn't with the Quadcast S. So it wins for those sort of capacitive soft touch setups. Now a bit more on the Endgame Gear microphone because what I will say is that as I said the specs on the sampling rate for example are higher it has a better capture quality out of the box. It also has the same sort of appeal in terms of the shock mount system and also the RGB lighting. Slightly different setup there as I'll go into in a minute. And the other highlight to it is that you can remove it from its mic stand and it's a much simpler affair because there's no extra attachment that you need, no extra clips, just unscrew one thing and then screw it onto your boom arm. So this is the Rode PSA One Plus that I'm using here, but it will fit with any standard boom arm mount. I just wanted to show the differences between these two. But what I found is then once it's on, it's not that easy to adjust as it was with the Quadcast. But what you can do is you can easily pop this microphone off of the various shock mount loops that are attached on there, and then you can remove it and turn it around and adjust the position of it. Now the difference with this microphone is it uses cardioid pickup pattern only, so that is the only polar pattern that you have on there. So it will only pick up your voice when talking into the front where the Endgame Gear logo is. So it's not really designed for other use cases like podcasting. So what you need to do is get it on the mic arm in a position where you can talk into it easily and get close to it. You'll also notice that there's a volume wheel at the bottom, so this adjusts the gain on the microphone and then you also have that gauge so you have a level gauge on the front which sort of lets you know how much of your audio the microphone is picking up and the levels of where that's pinging up to obviously you don't want to fill that up if you want your sound to be good and one of the things is to get that gain down on both the microphones as low as possible pressing that button in also adjusts the rgb lighting so you can flick between 12 different lighting profiles there's 10 colors and a color cycling mode and obviously as i said already if you tap the top it also goes completely red so you have the rgb letting you know but as you can see here when i'm trying to get it to mute it's not working that well i was a bit aggressive with it i was gentle with it playing around with it i just didn't find it muted terribly well there and that is one of my biggest complaints potentially about it but when it does you can see that so it is really obvious that it's muted and that's one of the nice things of both these microphones so if you're never sure whether your mic's muted then you will definitely know with these when it is and that's one of the highlights but this gain wheel is a bit noisier than the one on the quadcast now you probably won't be turning your volume up and down constantly you will find a level that suits you in your environment and then you'll likely stick to it but you can see some of the slight differences between these in terms of the specs difference the polar pattern differences and the way you adjust them and things like that 
and I think the quadcast wins in some of those elements. However, that's not to say that the in-game gear microphone isn't fantastic. It also has its own external pop filter, so you have the option to pop this on if you want to, and it's held on with a magnet, so it easily attaches to the body and it's just stuck on there. Now the Quadcast S has its built into it already, so that's worth bearing in mind. Now one of the main things that makes this microphone more interesting is that it has AI noise cancellation. So that little button above the USB port is actually a button to flick on the AI noise cancellation effect. So you can turn that on and it will automatically block out external surrounding noise which is really impressive. And you usually have to download extra software in order to do this, like NVIDIA's broadcast software or Crisp AI, for example. But now you have the option to just flick a switch and do it, which you don't have with the Quadcast. So that makes this microphone fantastic. It does add a little bit of compression to it, and there are other issues. For example, plugging a 3.5mm jack in, you won't actually hear your own voice without a delay over when you're using the AI noise cancellation. So you actually have a bit of an echo in your voice, which isn't ideal. And now I'm gonna go into a mic comparison to show you the difference. So if you guessed that I was using the in-game gear microphone for the voiceover for this video, then you're correct. And that's what I've been using so far. And here it is, as you can see, mounted on the Rode PSA One Plus. It's about a fist length from my mouth at the moment and I have the pop filter attached. It's also turned in the shock mount, as I discussed already. Now, this microphone, as you can hear, has a fantastic capture quality. One of the things I want to demonstrate briefly, though, is that I'm not using the AI noise cancellation for a minute. And I think the reason for that is I actually think that the capture quality is superior without it. Now, the, I, want, I will demonstrate the difference that it makes, but first, what I want to do is turn the gain up so you can hear the noise in my room because my computer is kicking out a fair amount of sound because it's a very hot day. It's just been the hottest day on record in England the last couple of days. It was very hot and uh, PC's running quite hot because of it. But this has a knock-on effect. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute. I'm going to turn this up just so you can hear the noise levels. And what you could hear there is that was very noisy in terms of what it picks up. But if I turn it up again and then turn on the AI noise cancellation, which as you can see is just this little button down here. And now, turn the gain back down again. And now you can hear that I have the gain not all the way down, but you could immediately see that the background noise was eliminated. My voice is also a bit more compressed now, so it doesn't sound as rich. And I think that's an important point of note is that the quality is just not as good. So I'd say actually, if you want it best sounding, don't use the AI noise cancellation. I also have 3.5 mil headset plugged into the microphone you can see here. And with the AI noise cancellation on, you get an ever so slight delay. So I can hear myself twice. Um, I can hear myself talking outside and into my ears, obviously, and through the microphone, but then I hear it again with an ever so slight delay. So it's like this horrible echo effect, which is horrific. And it only happens when the AI noise cancellation is turned on. Obviously, you can turn mic monitoring off. And that's the other important point of note that I made in the review is that as standard, the mic monitoring isn't on. So you plug 3.5 mil connection in, you might not hear yourself. And that's because you have to dive into Windows sound settings in order to tweak some sound settings there so that you can actually hear yourself. It's really simple to do, and I demonstrated how in my review. But it, with the Quadcast S, for example, it's just plug and play. So you plug the headset in and immediately you can hear yourself. There's a bit more fiddles required with this microphone. And I really can't get on with the mic monitoring while also <laughs> having that on so it's just and now you can probably hear the background noise again so I have to adjust the gain a little bit just to knock that out and I've done a video separately on how to make this mic sound good so if you do purchase it and be sure to check out my other video to see the tips and tricks for making it sound fantastic but what you can see is is a great sounding microphone also I just want to do a little bit of a test for background typing so I'm just going to be typing in the background right now and you might well be able to pick up some of that and then what I'm going to do while I'm doing that is I'm also just going to flick that button again so now I'm still typing in the background and you probably can't hear it 
I definitely can't hear it through the mic monitoring, so I'm pretty sure you can't hear it at all. So you can see how intelligent at the hardware level of mic noise cancellation is with that AI, which is really, really fantastic. It's not something I've seen on any other microphone apart from that software level where you download some extra software to do it. So just flick a button and have that capability is fantastic. It's not gimmicky, it does work, and it is really impressive with the downside that it compresses your mic ever so slightly and also does a delay on the mic monitoring. But otherwise, a really fantastic microphone. Now I'm going to get into the Quadcast S. And here I am with the HyperX Quadcast S, and you can see quite a difference in terms of the RGB lighting. I actually do think that this microphone is the better looking of the two. Also as standard, it's a little bit easier in terms of plug and play functionality. So although the HyperX microphone does have software, and I would recommend downloading it because it, you can update firmware, for example, and change the RGB lighting, both of them are plug and play. The Endgame Gear microphone doesn't have any software, but you can plug your 3.5mm headset into this microphone and immediately mic monitor straight out of the box, whereas with the Endgame Gear it requires a little bit more tweaking. Now as you can hear, this is still a fantastic sounding microphone, even though the sample rate isn't as high, it's still really rich. Obviously it doesn't have any noise cancellation, but there are things that you can do to improve it. Obviously pop filter and shock mount anyway, it does do a really good job of capturing good quality there. Put the mic on a boom arm, get it close to your mouth, turn the gain down, and there are some other things that you can do. I've done a video separately on how to improve the quality of this microphone that I'll link to, but it's a great sounding mic. It's great sounding, it's great looking, it's packed full of wonderful features. It's plug and play and also just simple things. Like you can see how, how well that responds and the fact you can't even hear it when I touch it. That sort of thing is really great, and the volume wheel, the obviously the flexibility of being able to adjust the other things. For the sake of fairness, I'm obviously also going to do a typing test in the background now, so I will be typing. And I would recommend getting it on a mic arm for this sort of thing to avoid picking up with this noise. And it's the same with both of them. You want to get them off the desk, really. Although they come with a desk stand, you really need a good quality boom arm to avoid problems and to just get a better overall experience out of it. So hopefully you found this video useful and a good insight into both microphones and what they offer. Slightly different specs, slightly different features, slightly different quality. I think the build quality in the HyperX is probably a little bit superior, but then it doesn't have a button that you can just flick to eliminate all your background noise, or the majority of it, with a really simple press of a button, which is pretty fantastic. So the Endgame Gear microphone is much more than just a copycat. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Hit that subscribe button if you found this video useful. Also, a big shout out to my YouTube members who get a lovely mention in the description and are a wonderful part of my community helping support the growth of the channel. Head over to my Discord to say hello and say hello to them as well. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.